Hi everyone, Marla Miller from MarlaMiller.com presenting our 55th quick query critique. Um, this one is a redo and this author has been patiently waiting after she sent me her $10 so I apologize again. It got lost. I've been doing a lot of traveling lately so um, my apologies. But before I get to that I just want to again talk just for a minute or two about um, the many emails that I've been getting from from people who ask me just one question. Um, I just have one question about marketing and um, I can't take the time to answer all your questions. Um, I do offer consultation fees and by uh, the quarter hour so if you're interested in buying 15 minutes of my time or 30 minutes of my time let me know and have all your questions ready and we can chat by phone. That would work totally fine for me. Can't do that. Um, I just I mean, you know why I can't do it. Okay. Um, the other thing is that what, but it did give me this idea to really put uh, writers who are doing exactly what you should be doing in our e-publishing reality um, on the site so that you can, um, you know, look to them as role models because they're really doing wonderful work. One of them is Sonia Marsh and um, her gutsy living site is on uh, my news, my newsletter, um, and Sonia's writing a memoir. Has not got it sold yet, but she is. Uh, when she does get it sold, um, she is going to um, have a fabulous audience waiting because she's she works very hard at at expanding and develop, developing and expanding her platform. And then the other one is Madeline Sharples, who is a published author, and again she has a memoir. And um, I use her as another example of an author who is um, doing all kinds of things to expand her presence and solidify her platform and if you look at um, Sharple's work you will see that how she branches out from the memoir that she's writing to blog about X, Y, and Z that's kind of related but really is you know it's an extension of um, and that's what we have to do so um, I hope that those examples will be helpful to you and just go to MarlaMiller.com and there they are alright here we go um, this is a mystery Lorca von Ruder had planned on being a wife, mother, and school teacher, never a widow with a family to support. Her husband Andy's suicide wreaked economic havoc on the family. When two old dears presented Lorca with a too-good-to-be-true offer of teaching position in their posh school in Switzerland, she jumps at the chance. The romance of Europe and financial freedom crumbles when a number of facts emerge. One, Andy's death was premeditated murder, a setup to entrap Lorca. Two, the Acadie... The Academe de Lis has a checkered past involved with human experimentation and research conducted during World War II. Lorca's genetic inheritance links directly with these experiments. Three, Lorca's genes are needed to complete the project started three quarters of a century before. She unravels the truth, confronts the potential evil within her, and the lethal impact such evil will have if released upon modern society. By then, she swept away by a love that defies time and space, a love threatened by the knowledge survival or damnation depends on destroying one of two men, identical twins, the love of her life or his brother. Keepers of the Lily, a 125,000 word suspense novel, focuses on whether fate or free will determines a person's destiny. Red herrings conceal the truth until the end where the tale concludes with a Harlan Coben type twist. The novel is complete. Please let me know if you're interested in reading partial or all of Keepers. I appreciate your time and attention. I'm a member of the blank colony blank and blank. I've won awards in both national and local writing competitions this, pre this spring placing third in blank annual writing contest. I keep current through workshops and conferences. My training as a blank helped me with technical details of this novel. Sincerely. Okay, so what do I think of Keepers of the Flame? Oh, I'm sorry, Keepers of the Lily, and this is a uh, redo, so I've read this before. Um, well, I think that in, par in, in the first paragraph where she um, sets up the hook for wanting us to read more, because remember, that's what the query should do. It should make us want to read more. Um, she, she does that fairly well. I think that she may give up to may give too much information there. She might want to look at that uh, in her one, two, three uh, points. She might want to condense that a little bit. 
Um, and then here's where I have trouble. And I have trouble with um, the last two sentences or the last several sentences. After she says that, that um, such evil will happen, will have if released upon modern society, by then she's swept away by a love that defies time and space. You know, I think that this writer, given given the quality of her writing, because she's a good writer, um, needs to look at that. And I would encourage her to look at the, the rest of that paragraph and see if you can't bleed that in better than you have. Because it looks to me like you told one part of the story and then you brought in the romance and you told that part of the story and I don't see the interconnectivity and um, I don't see where the, the love is adding to the tension, um, her, her new love. And my guess would be that the new love is adding to the tension because I think he's an evil twin, good, good twin, bad twin. Um, so I'd look at that, and I'd see if I couldn't tighten that into this uh, a bit better. Um, and then the other thing that I would say is um, writing credentials are superb. Um, the reference to Harlan Coben, that's really uh, the author's choice. Um, oftentimes I tell people don't do that because um, you set yourself up for uh, disappointment, um, especially if the agent is reading this and going, you know, because um, Harlan Corbin is iconic. Um, but if she wants to do that because her story is, or the, the, um, the um, crafting of her story is similar to Coben's, which is, you know, he usually pulls something from the past that's unresolved and then I think wraps it into his, his, uh, his projects. And I would think that she's going to, we're going to be reading about Nazi Germany and hers. So, um, if she wants to do that, that's her call. It's a judgment call. I tend to not do that or recommend people. I want them to get hooked. And I want the agent to call me and say, boy, that's a Harlan Coben story. I got to, I got to, you know, I, that's what I, I want the agent to be left with that. I don't want to have to tell her. Um, because if she's left with that, she'll call you or email you. They usually call. Um, I'm not going to say any more than that. I think that, um, you know, she could send it as is if she wanted to, but I would uh, encourage her to look at those last four or five sentences and see if you can't bleed that into it from the very beginning. I think it would help your query and help the hook. I hope this is helpful. Until the next time, be well. Keep writing.